Now, there's this stereotype out there, right, that progressives and liberals and uh, whatnot are sort of snooty, like people who think they're like shit doesn't stink, you know, fart sniffers, that kind of thing, right? You see the South Park episode where like all of the East Coast liberals or whatever are sitting around sniffing their own farts, that kind of thing. That's like kind of this stereotype you get from the right wing, at least, when it comes to liberal elitists, you know, you're sitting around eating uh, your hamburgers with brown mustard and uh, eating leeks, you know, strange vegetables that uh, no God-fearing red-blooded American should ever lay eyes on. <laughs> Stuff like that, right? It's a stereotype. Just being a conservative doesn't automatically make you stupid. Just being a, a liberal or a progressive or a Democrat doesn't automatically make you smarter than the average bear. But it does kind of seem like that sometimes, doesn't it? You read studies where they say, oh, well, people of this political party or this political persuasion or whatever tend to be have higher IQs or they're more educated. And then you'll read another one that say, oh, well, no, it's actually conservatives that are actually higher educated and they make more money and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, what do you actually believe? It's a stereotype. There really is no intelligence measure that determines what what side you vote for or what political ideology you believe but it just seems to me <laughs> after i just said all that shit you know setting everything up and poisoning the well and all that it just seems to me that you tend to get a lot more really really just stupid liars I guess is, is the term that I would want to use on the right wing. A lot more crazy people, a lot more fringe people, a lot more people who have no clue what the fuck they're talking about and who often fall for misinformation, fake news, stuff like that. People who just haven't really done the legwork or any proper research in order to back up the claims they make or justify the beliefs they have. I am not saying that I am above having a bias. I obviously have a bias. Anybody who watches my streams or has seen my videos knows that I have a bias and I don't hide it. I don't think I should have to hide it. If you like what I gotta say, that's cool. And if you don't, that's cool too and you can believe whatever you want to believe. That's what I think. But it really does seem to me that there is a lot more, I guess, just cult-like behavior on the right wing, a lot more predilection to believe things that are blatantly untrue, and a lot more of that sort of too stupid to know what's going on kind of effect, you know, the Dunning-Kruger kind of thing, even though that's not really what Dunning-Kruger is. You know, Dunning-Kruger is when you're like, you believe you're more competent than you actually are, which I guess, I guess that kind of fits, that kind of fits the bill, but not exactly, but it's, it's a close sort of descriptor for what I'm talking about. People who believe things that are demonstrably untrue and double down on them and when they're faced with evidence to the contrary and who don't want to know otherwise because it's more of a more of a political identity. It's more important to have their identity than it is to have the truth. And I, I really think that's what separates the two sides here. You know, when people say both sides are the same and all that, and all this politician is scummy and so is so are the Democrats on your side and blah 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 blah. Yeah, okay, that's definitely true. But I really think what separates the two is that one side is really interested in the actual truth. One side is that you know, the, the progressives and the and the Democrats and the liberals and people generally on the left tend to just not bullshit themselves when something that they believe is proved wrong, they don't try to justify it, in my experience. Now, I'm not saying that nobody who's ever been a leftist has never done this and that they don't believe in, you know, or that they don't believe in things that are that are not effective or not true or whatever. I'm not claiming any of that it just seems to me that that tendency is far more pronounced in the right wing 
in this country. From everything from science denial to just denial of basic facts about humanity, <laughs> right? Just everything, everything from, and, and, it, and it seems to be just every issue that you come across. You know, they, they don't believe in global climate change despite overwhelming evidence. They, uh, they tend to be anti-vaxxers despite overwhelming evidence that it actually vaccines are effective and they work. They don't care about that. They just want to believe what they want to believe. They, they don't believe in prison reform or drug rehabilitation despite overwhelming evidence that it actually leads to more positive outcomes. All right. They don't believe in just all kinds of things that, that you see in other countries, policies that are enacted in other countries where that actually help people. You know, everything from, like I said, drug addiction to social welfare programs to prison and police reform to voting to the environment and labor and just everything. And it, it just and it really seems like they just want to double down on what they believe. And, it, and it's more focused and it's more based on their culture and less on results. And I really think that stems if I if I had to make a guess, right? An uneducated, just straight up guess. If I just had to guess about that, I would say it comes from the fact that more people on the right wing are religious. More people who are religious who tend to believe in things that are demonstrably untrue. They they tend to believe on thing they tend to believe things on faith. And people on the left wing don't believe things in faith. They believe evidence and that's the fundamental difference in our worldviews so I want to show a couple of videos this is what this little segments all about this segment that we're about to jump into is called Jesus fucking Christ Republicans are stupid <laughs> and this is where I show examples of conservatives and specifically Republicans acting like complete and utter fucking morons doing and saying things that are utterly ridiculous purely for the fact that we get to make fun of them because I don't think we do that enough see here on the left wing you know we're, we're all liberal and progressive and and you know we want to help people and all this other shit I think it's healthy sometimes to just sit back and poke fun at the monkeys sometimes because that's what these people act like that's what they are they're they're basically howler monkeys and I think it's sometimes you know it's good to go to a zoo and look at animals and stuff and see how they act. Look at those crazy ass monkeys. They almost look like people. <laughs> so the first little thing I got here, let's look at our first little howler monkey of the day. I'll turn on my laptop. This is a woman named Erin Mazzoni. This was at a citizen's comments at the BOMA work session in Tennessee. Basically, she's getting up in front of the state government to talk about school policies and banning books and shit like that. And let's see what Erin Mazzoni has to say here to the Tennessee School Board. Hello, my name is Erin Mazzoni, and my address is on file. I just moved here from Bucks County, Pennsylvania. Hearing what this person just said really upsets me because our entire community of North fell apart. It was like watching a bad car accident for three years straight. It started out as pride coming in and I thought everything would be okay. I was totally fine with them having and doing what they wanted under the- Okay. I like how immediately she begins crying right off the bat. <laughs> right. Our community fell apart and it started with pride so this person here before we get into a little bit more of what she's saying Aaron Mazzoni here is a staffer that works currently is working for a mayoral candidate in Franklin Tennessee named Gabriel Hansen and so she's sort of like a you know conservative political operative and she has advocated banning books based on their LGBTQ content including a book called The Bluest Eye written by a person named Toni Morrison because it has a scene describing sexual abuse. 
Now, I haven't actually read the bluest eye from, but from what I understand, the scene is a negative scene where someone is sexually abused. It's not celebrating the fact that this person is sexually abused. It's it's saying that it's a bad thing. And that was the reason that they used to ban this book. Because in real life, the reason why they want to ban every single LGBTQ book is because they want to take control of the education system. And so that they can indoctrinate children into their own sort of culture. I've got a video coming up on that, so I'm not going to get into that too much now. That's a subject for a future video coming soon. But what they do is they're using the pretext of sexual content. The idea that being that, oh, well, children shouldn't have sexual content of any kind, which is arguable, but I would say bullshit. I don't believe that at all. I think you can have appropriate sexual content, depending on how old the child is. Obviously, someone who's in grade school, you're not going to be talking about sexual stuff beyond you know birds and the bees kind of thing and you don't learn about that until you're what 10 11 you know there's that special day where they take all the kids and uh, all the girls go off into their separate little room so that they can learn about like tampons and the, that time of the month and like girly things and all the boys go off into a different side of the inside of the auditorium so they can learn about uh, stds and how if you ever have sex once your dick is gonna fall off <laughs> That's what they teach us, by the way, girls, like ladies out there. When you were like learning about your reproductive system and all that stuff, they were showing us pictures of genital warts. So just want to let you all, you know, that's what was going on back in fifth grade or whatever. But what, when was that? That was for me, I was 11. That was fifth grade for me. I mean, you don't show that to a kindergartner, but you wait a few years, right? So they, so no, it's not, it's not as cut and dry as they say. Well, why is it so bad to have appropriate sexual content in a book or a movie or a, or anything like that at all? Well, that's that's the pretext that they go under to ban all these books and shit. And this is one of those people that is making that happen. So, for you know, some for example, in Texas, something like in 2022, there were literally thou like the most um, the most challenges to books. I actually have a, an article here from Cron, which I'll put the link down in the thing, but it said in 2022, the state challenged more than 2,300 titles. That is separate titles in books to be banned for inappropriate content. And it just so happens that the vast majority of all those books are from LGBTQ authors. And so that's what it really is. This is when, when they say culture war, this is the this is what we're talking about. It actually is a war, one culture against another. And basically the conservatives want their culture to be dominant. So that's who this person is here. And she's getting up in front of this school board here in order to claim that her society, her, her, her town, <laughs> right, her city is falling apart because of pride events. Let's just rewind that just a little bit it's only a minute long, so I'm just going to let her talk, and I'm going to shut the fuck up. But I wanted to listen to exactly what she has to say. Let's continue. Being a bad car accident for three years straight, it started out as pride coming in. And I thought everything would be okay. I was totally fine with them having and doing what they wanted under the laws. And it ended with a rainbow room where 8 to 12-year-old kids were given butt plugs and dildos. And <laughs> trained. They just got a city grant for six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I have to jump in. I'm sorry. So you hear what you said? Okay. It's like a slow moving car accident. It started with pride events, where they came in, and I was fine with it. So it's like, okay, yeah, I have no problem with these people. See that? That's what that's what she's trying to say here, right? This is what the message is getting across to me. This is what it sounds like to me. Okay. I got no problem with these people. I am totally cool with it. I am a young, hip, open-minded person. I'm not a bigot whatsoever. But then they went too far. Now they're teaching kids about butt plugs. And you see how she's she's barely holding tears in? Do you think this person went up in front of a mirror the night before and was like running through this in her head and like acting 
and stuff, like trying to like learn how she can cry on command and shit. Are, are you falling for this shit? I'm not. This is the most phony baloney bullshit like ever. Crocodile tear load of fucking crap. Uh, they're the bride events. They're giving kids butt plugs, <laughs> which is bull. No one is giving children butt plugs. This is 100% made up bullshit. <laughs> and it's just sort of like, do people fall for this shit? When people see this stuff, are there people like you know at home right now going, oh god, we have to do something about those damn gays. They're forcing my kid to get buck plugs. They're training them at school. Giving my kids butt plugs at school. You have like math, English, social studies, and then butt plugs class. Like, <laughs> hey mom, I got an A plus in butt plugs class. It's like, get the fuck out of here. But let's continue. Let's continue. To be able to do more training on the children. It was horrendous. <laughs> I have asked my friends there what if it's getting any better every single one of them are leaving and it is a very good tax base these conservatives are good tax base people <laughs> okay wait wait all right all right all right 10 seconds left sorry I'll, i will shut up it was absolutely horrible to watch you think that you're doing things based on laws but you are doing things and you are led okay okay butt plugs the evil horrible butt plugs so a couple things i want to mention there first where she says that it's falling apart and conservatives are leading you know leaving her town there because of the evil uh, butt plug classes <laughs> fucking hilarious and you notice where she says uh well these are good conservative people good conservative tax base people Basically kind of giving that stereotype again, and it's a stereotype that only conservatives contribute to the economy. Only conservatives have jobs, which is bullshit. And that's that's a that's another kind of stereotype like conservatives have claimed the claimed like they, they're trying to monopolize workers and populism, essentially economic populism. They're trying to monopolize that, which is bullshit, because in real life conservatives and republicans don't give a flying fuck about working class people they never have and they never will they pay lip service to them in so far as the goals of working class people can be bent around to basically conform to the the wills and desires of the upper class they're perfectly fine playing populist when it comes to things like immigration all those damn uh, you know the Mexicans, they're sending over rapists and murderers. I mean, I'm sure some of them are good people, but they're sending them over to steal your job, shit like that. Perfectly fucking happy to do that. But when the chips are down and the rubber hits the road, they side with the, you know, the bosses, the corporations every single time because that's who they are and that's who they've been for 50 years ever since Ronald Reagan broke the airline strikes way back in the 80s. That's what conservatives have always been about. They've always been about subjugating labor in the service of, not just the service of capitalism, but the service of the upper 1%. See, when you say like capitalism, it makes it sound like they care about small businesses and that they care about, uh, you know, your average guy on the street with a hot dog stand or something. They don't give a fuck about that. They don't care about that. If you own a small business, they don't give a fuck about your small business. They're not cutting your taxes. They don't give they don't give a shit about any of that stuff. They care about the upper 1%, the big money money grubbing corporate assholes, the people like Jeff Bezos and giant New York fucking hedge fund managers and shit like that. Essentially Donald Trump's friends. That's what they fucking really care about. They don't give a fuck. I mean, if you own a small business someplace, you know, you own a store or something, right? You own a plumbing business, whatever, right? Something like that. You're a roofer. They don't give a shit about you and they won't lift a goddamn finger to fucking help you. It's just something that they've co-opted for, you know, what? I'm just going to erase this, this, this whole thing with the, with the barbed wire over here. It just looks like shit. I'm just getting rid of the whole thing. 
<laughs> I'm sitting there I'm like, oh, I'll just redraw the barbed wire. It's like, no, maybe I'll draw it and scan it in and put it in there, but it just looks fucking horrible. So we're just we're just tossing this entire barbed wire thing. So that's the first thing. So she makes it sound like, oh, these conservatives are going to leave and you're going to lose all this tax money. Right. Oh, like that's what they really fucking give a shit about is money. Right. So that's the first thing. Secondly, it's it's sort of like what this person is talking about. She's talking about the Rainbow Room. So the Rainbow Room is actually a youth program for LGBTQ youth. We can go ahead and open up their Instagram page here. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can kind of see who they are. This is the Rainbow Room. And they're essentially a program that they go around and they hold classes and stuff. You know, like here you can kind of see... So this is basically, yeah, the, the Rainbow Room. They they go around, they have events. Uh, here we go, Queer Prom 2024. You know, so like they'll go to a school, you know, or something and, and they'll hold like an off-campus like event because for queer people, because like, you know, the normal queer people aren't allowed to go to the normal prom or they're not allowed to bring like same-sex dates to a normal prom or something. You know, they'll, they'll have events like this, right? Here we go. Queer Youth Support Group. And ages 14 to 21. So it's like, they're teenagers. Teenagers to young adults. They're, we're not talking about, like, small grade school kids or whatever. Kids who are in, like, you know, third grade or something like that. Or, you know, we're not they're not taking preschoolers and handing them sex toys or any shit like that. They're taking teenagers. I don't know if you know this, if you have a, if you have a teenage child out there. But teenagers have sex with each other. I didn't know if you knew that. They do. And teenagers can also be gay or lesbian or trans. I don't know if you knew that either. But they can. And it is actually not only more common now than it ever has been, but they're more open about it now. And they should be open about it because these are normal, healthy, ordinary things that everybody does when they're teenagers. It's perfectly fine for teenagers to be sexually active as long as it's with other teenagers, <laughs> right? It, am I wrong about that? I mean, as long as it's with other of their of other people who are the same age as them, as long as they're not doing any funny shit with like other like adults or something. If they're like, you know, your kid has a girlfriend or whatever, or a boyfriend or something like that, they're going to experiment, are they not? Yes, they will. They will have sex. I don't know if you understand this. If you're an adult, if you have a, if you have a, a child who is a teenager, they your teenager is going to engage in sex, whether you like it or not. That's the other thing. You're not going to be able to stop them either. What are you going to do? Take your kid, chain him to a wall, throw him in the basement for fucking until he turns eighteen? No. And it's perfectly normal and healthy for kids to do this. I and mean, it just so happens that kids are a lot more open about um, not being completely 100% heteronormative nowadays. They're much more cool with it. And this is so groups like this go out there to help them, which is healthy and that's how it should be. This is what Aaron Mazzoni is talking about here, giving butt plug training to my children. If you listen to what she said, during that little speech she gave where she was crying, she made it sound like this was a thing that the school was forcing on people. Oh, they're giving butt plug classes and shit like that. That's what it sounded like when it has nothing to do with the school. It was a group completely outside, off-campus, optional. And here's the other thing. If you don't like it, let's go ahead and turn this off, right? If you are a parent and you don't like it, you are perfectly within your rights to prohibit your child from attending something like this. It makes you a dick, in my opinion, makes you an asshole. Maybe your kid and you need to have a heart to heart <laughs> because your kid's not going to be hanging around very long if you're like suppressing their sexuality like that. Step backwards there. But that is perfectly within your rights. No one is going to tell you that you're not allowed to do that because you are, right? So what the fuck is the problem here? The problem is conservatives are losing the culture war. That's the goddamn problem. <laughs> they know they're losing, so they rely on fear and hatred in order to basically 
get their way. She, that woman there, Mazzoni, right, was in front of that school board in order to ban these people. That's what she was trying to do. She was trying to ban this group, right? She wanted them to lose access so that children aren't allowed to go to this group anymore. And make no mistake, if she had her way, she would use the force of the law to enforce this, right? Because that's what conservatives are all about. Conservatives are all about forcing people Especially, especially when it comes to these um, social conservatives, culture warrior types. They're all about using state power in order to enforce their will on everybody else. Because that's what fascism is. Hello folks, if you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my SD shop, supporting me on Patreon, liking and subscribing, and checking me out across my social media links listed below. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.